Now I've got two cameras here to reassemble, cameras one and camera three. And I'm only going to show you the reassembly process once for each component. Unless there's a difference between the components. So probably camera three will not be showing up an awful lot. But that's fine. You'll be able to learn it all doing it once. So I'm going to start with the lock lever and release lever for the film advance. So I've got some molybdenum paste on a toothpick, just running through the holes there. On this face here, because that's where the spring on the end of the release lever will run. And the two holes at the top of the body here and here. You don't need an awful lot. Just a smear of molybdenum paste will do very nicely. I'll fit the lock lever in place. Get its return spring. There are two return springs that look much the same. The shorter one belongs to the lock lever. The longer one belongs to the release lever. I'll just flip that spring over the top. Now, holding the lock lever with my finger below and compressing the spring with my thumb at the top to expose the groove, I can take the little C clip or E clip that retains the spring, put it in place on the slot. Using the tail of my tweezers, I can just clip that into place. And there's our lock lever, sprung loaded and working nicely. The release lever is this piece. And the release lever has this spring on the tip of the release lever. That spring is a little bit out of shape. The coil here, as you look down on it, is not tight. So I'm going to see if I can bend that down so that that spring is lying nice and flat where it's going to go over the little boss that it fits over. So I'm holding the coil of the spring flat between my tweezers. I'm getting the end of the spring, pushing it down Now that spring lies flat and it'll fit over the boss and stay where it's put. So now I've got to fit this over the boss on the end of the lever and the little hook on the end of it goes underneath the release lever and the loop has to fit over and around that stud or boss on the top there, like that. And take this, goes in here. Take care not to damage this spring when you're putting this in place. Pull that spring forward as you drop that lever down. And the spring runs against the body at this point. Now, fit its return spring in place. I'm supporting that release lever with my finger from underneath. There's the screw that goes on the top. Now that's running into a split shaft there. It's not always easy to get the screw to start.
But if you keep it square to the screw, it should run in okay. Now I'm just checking the feel of that. It seems a little bit loose to me. I don't think it would keep its adjustment very well, so I'm going to remove that and see if I can squeeze in the top of that shaft so it would grip the screw a bit firmer. I just pushed that in with the tip of my screwdriver and I'll have another go at putting that screw in. Of course it'll be harder to get the screw to start now because I've closed up the top of the shaft. It'll probably go. Here we go. That's in. And that's working nicely. So that's our release lever and our lock lever in place in the body. And now we can deal with the film advance shaft. So here we have our first difference between the two cameras. Camera number one. You can see that the shaft is nickel plated. Camera number three here, the shaft is brass. It hasn't been nickel plated. That's not the only difference. There's a difference in the tops. The cylindrical section on for camera number one that is shorter than the cylindrical section on camera number three. The squared section at the top for camera number one is deeper or longer than the squared section for camera number three. And that's because they engage in different components at the top of the camera. So I'll put that one aside. That's our, for camera number three. And we'll bring that camera in. I don't need to show you me installing that part. Now I've explained the difference. But the film advance, we want to get this into this camera. So we'll start here. This is the bush from the bottom of the take-up spool. It goes into the take-up spool. It goes into the round hole, not the slotted hole. And this can go into the camera body. You open up the back of the camera. The bush goes to the bottom. The slot goes to the top. Take our film advance and I'll need to lubricate this. So, what have I got here? I've got some molybdenum based grease. It's not the same as the dry molybdenum paste I use. This is a grease. How much of the Content of this is molybdenum is anyone's guess. It might just be there as a marketing gimmick. This stuff's quite tacky. And being quite tacky, it sticks to the shaft quite well. And as a result, you end up with a, a lubricated surface that's that retains its lubrication. Right, so I've got some synthetic grease here. I'm going to rub that into the spring. That's so that the coils of the spring will roll over each other smoothly because that gets wound up quite tight in the film advance. And on the cam surfaces at the bottom here, top and bottom surface, I'm just running a bit of synthetic grease. And that's nice to use because it's nowhere near as messy as that black stuff. Okay, so I'm just checking to see if I can, to make sure that the spring here is engaged with the slot. 
and I'm lining up the screw holes through, through the holes in the plate. I take the camera body, I can drop the shaft in, it should drop through the bush in the film take up spool. Come on camera, hurry up. Is that thinking about focusing? Yeah, just about. Bring that round to this position. There's a big cutout here which drops over that lock lever. There's a, little, a notch here which drops over the release lever. And with luck that seats itself quite nicely. It does. So I'm holding that with my finger. Open the back of the camera. Check that the take up spool is down. That it's not pushed up to the top of the chamber. That spring I mentioned on the bottom of the shaft, if that comes out of its groove, if it's sitting around to the side, for example, I'm not really sure I can achieve it on this one, if it's out of place, then it won't go up into the take up spool, it won't go through that bush. So be aware of that. However, we seem to be quite good here, I think. If this camera would hurry up and focus. Yeah, it's doing it now. We've got three fixing screws. The screws are nickel plated. They're the same size as the screws that hold the trim on the base of the camera. Typically the ones for this position will not be covered in adhesive. So they're easy to, to find. Now that screw's just popped around the corner where I can't see it. It didn't drop into the hole correctly. So I'll take this out and have another go. Yep, that's just sitting in sideways. Just to annoy me back where we were. I'll just fix this focus. It should do it. Line up the holes. As usual with things of this nature with multiple holes, get all your screws in place first. And when they're all in place, then you can tighten them up. Okay, that seems fine. Let's check that the take up spool is where I left it. That's good. I'll tighten the three screws up. And that's the advanced shaft in place. Alright, here we have the clutch assembly for the two different cameras. This is the drum from camera number one. This is the drum from camera number three. The drum from camera number one is taller and it has a recess milled in the end. This is the, the center drive dog from camera number one. This is the drive dog from camera number two, three rather. The drive dog for camera number three is shorter, as you can see. It's also made out of aluminium. The springs are the same in both cases. So assembling this. I'll take some molybdenum grease if 
if I can just find a nice clean toothpick to spread it with. And I'll apply this to the inside of the drum. As I say, this particular grease is nice and tacky, it'll stay where it's put. Next secret, we've got to get this spring in place in between the drive dog here, this little piece here, which you can't see because the camera's not focused, hang on, that's better. Now you can see it's got a tab on the spring that drops into the notch in this piece. Now how I get this compressed so I can assemble it, so I've got a pair of circlip pliers. I lower that over the top of the spring, holding it gently, rotate the core, pulling the spring into place, and then I can press the drum over the top. Now the recess in the end of that drum goes down. So I'm sliding that over the top. And this piece is assembled. I'll just wipe that excess grease off so you can see. That top surface is virtually flush. You can see that this is dropped into the recess at the bottom. And this turns nice and smoothly in one direction, and there's a lot more resistance in the other. The direction it turns nice and smoothly is fortunately for us the correct direction. You cannot put this together back to front. I'll do the other one, but you don't need to watch that. There's our two clutch assemblies side by side. Clutch assembly for side Camera number one, you can see that that's flush on both sides. On camera number three, you can see that there's a lip showing on the centerpiece at the bottom. In this piece, of course, the gear piece is narrower on here than it is on there. So that's all you need to know about that. And this clutch drops in over here. So that just drops in there and the two pegs on the base engage the slots and the take-up spool. Now we can put the guide bush on the top. As you can see the guide bushes are quite different. It's guide bush from camera number three, the later style, guide bush from camera number one. It's not just a difference in plating, the camera number one part is nickel plated, this one's not. But you'll see that there's a difference from the side. This one surrounds the drum, the clutch, and this one only just surrounds the top of it. I don't think it makes an awful lot of difference in practice how that was designed, but it certainly uses a lot less metal and presumably they did it to save money. Seems, seems like a good idea to me. So I'll get these two on their respective cameras. To prepare this to go onto the camera, I need to force some grease into this, these two pinions here. And I'm putting a big blob of grease on there, press on it with my finger, and the hydraulic pressure will push that in underneath the metal edges there, and that's all that was required. I'll give it a wipe round the centre using some synthetic grease again, and that can go on the camera. That just drops over there. You may need to open the back of the camera and rotate the take up spool with your thumb to turn the gear, or turn the clutch basically, so that it engages with this wheel down here below, like that. 
clipped that in place and we can put its fixing screw and so forth in place. So what have we got? Well in the case of a 3S camera we have a screw here You'll note I wasn't doing it up exceptionally tight. Then we have a bush that goes on the top here. Now that bush may have a countersunk side. The countersunk side goes down. There's a little ratchet pull that sits on top of that bush. And a screw, a shoulder screw that passes through there. I'm just going to put a touch of synthetic grease on the shaft of that screw where it passes through the pole and through that bush. Run that screw down. Be careful that the screw passes through the and doesn't get trapped on it otherwise it won't won't move properly but I'm tightening that screw up and its mate and fit the return spring on that pole just getting another toothpick to help me manipulate this into place So our spring runs against the wall here, the long arm, and the short arm is on this side of the pole. So it pushes the pole towards the centre. It doesn't need to be a strong action. It'll, all you'll achieve if you stiffen up that spring is that the film advance will make a, a loud ratcheting noise as it moves. And you don't need it to. Okay, so that part's all good. I'm just checking to make sure nothing's moved under here, everything's still in place. This gear goes on the top. So I'll run some synthetic grease around the inside edge of that and through the centre. And this will rotate, if I rotate this anti-clockwise it should push the pole out of the way and drop into position like that and I'll do the same on the other camera and we'll move on from there okay what do we got next? oh this this leaf spring arrangement Excuse me. You can see how much bend that's got on it. Don't overdo the bend. It only needs a little bit. That's job is to lift up one of the components in the film advance. I always give that a wipe of uh, synthetic grease and that's to protect it from any corrosion. Uh, being a high carbon steel it's probably prone, fairly prone to corrosion. That component is basically the same on both cameras, but then we come to a difference. On camera number one, this is the drive dog. It's got a raised boss on the bottom. It's got a recess in the top. You can see it's been machined. The drive dog for camera number three is this. It's just a flat piece of metal, slight bevel on two corners which are, that go downwards on the camera. So let's put this in place. On top of this goes that washer and on top of that goes the gear from the top of the film advance shaft. Now, 
camera number one. That gear has a boss on the bottom surface. It has a recess in the top. On camera number three, it's flush on the bottom surface. There's no boss and it has a recess on the top. So if you are looking for spare parts, be very cautious about what you mix and match. This just fits over that squared piece in the center. And if I take the screw and my screwdriver, I can run that down. Now because the lock lever is locking the film advance, I can just tighten this up. I've got some resistance there. That's the film advance shaft completely fitted to camera number one. And camera number three, basically there's no, not much difference there. All those components are the same. I'll just wipe a little bit of grease onto that spring. This piece is the same in both cases. This piece, there's two corners that have got a little bevel on them. That goes downwards. And this should fit over the shaft. Our washer goes on there. And then the gear. And the gear only just engages there. It doesn't feel quite so positive with its engagement. And I can run this screw down. taking this very slow because I don't want to press the shaft down and have that gear disengage from the squared shaft. That's fine. I'll just nip that up and that's done. So we've got the same parts in on cameras one and three. I normally lock that screw with a touch of lacquer. I'm just putting a tiny dot of lacquer in that notch in the screw there. And there. You don't need to go mad and cover the entire top of the screw. That'll suffice. It's just to help uh, Oh, it's insurance really, you don't want that screw backing out. Okay, so the lock lever for the rewind button can go in now. So I'll take some molybdenum paste. And I'll give that just a little wipe around the tip. And usually I wipe through the centre hole just because I've got it in my hand. Drop this into place. I'll fit its return spring in position. Making sure that the leg of the spring here is against the case. I'll fit its screw in position. Now the shoulder screw has two shoulders, one for the spring, one for the lever. You need to make sure that the lever and the spring are both free to revolve around that screw before you completely tighten it down. That's good. Now I want to hook that spring into position so that it's tensioned. So I'll bring that lever around like that 
lift the tail of the spring over and tuck it behind the lever so the lever is now spring loaded and we can put the sprocket shaft in place Right, taking my sprocket shaft I apply a bit of synthetic grease to the shaft near the top, near the bottom it's running through the casting normally I'll wipe a little bit onto the teeth of the gear this drops in from the top of the camera it would help if I put the sprocket on there first I suppose here's our sprocket it's got a slot at one end, the slot goes up upwards the shaft should pass right through that you may need to well you will need to pull that lever back out of the way but you may need to guide that shaft through I'll just muck with the focus on this see if I can get this to follow us a bit better Right, so I'll just rotate that down a bit. I'm holding my finger on it from the top. Flip the camera up so I pull that tab back out of the way. And if I revolve this take up spool, that should drop down into position. Yeah, it has. So now, now that's sitting down in position. I'll lay this back down on the table. And I'm going to rotate my take-up spool here until I can see the screw hole in that slot on my sprocket there. And then I'll fit that little screw in place there. That screw will drive the sprocket from the sprocket shaft. You may find that that screw won't want to start smoothly. That's going well enough in this case, but you may find that it doesn't want to start. If you rotate the shaft 180 degrees, you may find that there's a better lead in on the opposite side and the screw will start straight away. Okay, that part's done. We want our rewind button in place next. So our rewind button is here. Take this spring, run a bit of grease through it, this is synthetic grease, put the spring onto the button, take its washer, the washer is quite distinctive, it's reasonably thick, it's always nickel plated. Hold the finger on the top of the shaft at the top there and screw this into the bottom of the shaft check that the button moves that means that the button's passing through the washer which is what it needs to do and then I'll tighten that with my special pliers I'm holding my thumb on the sprocket Tighten it with the pliers until your thumb hurts. That's tight enough. What if you haven't got any special pliers? You can use something like this. They've got nice smooth round jaws. Just don't overdo it. You squeeze too tight, you'll mutilate the button. But they will work. And that's what I used to use. Okay. So now we have our take-up spool and our sprocket shaft in place, our film advance components are all in here, the rewind button's in place and we can move on. The components on camera number three are identical to this so I'm not going to bother showing you that part again. The next round of parts are essentially identical between these two cameras. You've got this bush that goes in that just guides the bottom of your film cassette that drops in there. The tripod socket goes on the top. There's three screws in the tripod socket, countersunk, 
easily recognised they're only threaded part of the way down fairly long of course if you've uh, been very carefully laying parts out so you know where they go back you'll have no problem with that the screw heads are almost always somewhat rusty they're up against the leatherette leatherettes get damp you end up with problems right these three screws once they're all in place and all down you can tighten them up it's not uncommon for tripod screws to be a bit loose it's probably mostly just due to abuse okay so that part went smoothly enough and at the top of the camera we can put the film rewind bush in place that's the bush and I'm going to apply some synthetic grease to the inside of that it's got a little leaf spring on the inside just put some synthetic grease on there and feed the rewind shaft up into place it sits on there like that and there are two screws flathead or countersunk screws when you're putting the bush on the top of the camera take note that this cutaway section is on towards the centre of the camera it's cut away to clear the rangefinder components when they're both in place tighten the two screws up and that's that little bit out of the way so here we've got the baffle that goes in to the camera into the film chamber uh, now this this piece here you can see it's plain at one end it's got a notch at the cut in the other you can usually tell which way around it went well, I can see two marks here and one continuous mark there it tells me it's sat in there like that I'm going to apply a bit of glue to this because otherwise the baffle tends to fall out of place when you're trying to wriggle the shutter in and it's very it's an annoyance so all I normally do is apply a bit of glue top and bottom and then job done so I'll just get some adhesive and I'm just using my normal ADOS F2 contact adhesive apply some to the very edge of that tab same at the other side fit that in place since I've got a bit of extra adhesive here I'm just going to put a little wipe on there that's probably a bit over generous and the same at the other side Oh, it's a mess okay and I'll do that and then let that settle for a couple of minutes and then I'll put that into the camera okay I can start putting back in the rangefinder stuff in here so what do we want to start with well we need to start with this piece the transfer shaft so I'm going to take some synthetic grease and the side with the washer on it that's what we're interested in I was going to put some grease on the gear there doesn't need anything like as much as that on the front face swing that back out of the way drop that into position it should engage with the hole in the back of the casting there now there's a return spring for this arm 
it looks like this and it fits over here and basically that's, that's just a return action for this lever the arm for the rangefinder is held in place with the top plate what I normally do is put a touch of molybdenum paste on the pivots top and bottom and then you may have one or two tiny washers I'll put one on the bottom and engage that with the hole in the bracket here like that at the top you've got to get the top of the pin on the top of the arm here engage with that hole like that and then swing this plate into place which is held in place with three screws you can usually tell which screws you should be using because they shouldn't have any glue on them they haven't come from the base of the camera so I'll get these three screws in place Before I do them up hard, I'll just make sure that everything moves. It's all looking good. Tighten up the three screws. Alright, this arm, which controls the frame selection for the finder, I'm just going to give that a very light wipe of molybdenum paste at the top. So that it's not sticky at all, it's nice and smooth in its action. Let's swing that back out of the way. Put our baffle in here. This only goes in one way, and it's not hard to see which way in it goes. Pull that arm down, put the rangefinder coupling arm in the front, and then we can put the chrome trim on the top of the camera body. Alright. I'll tip the camera up. Here's our chrome trim from the top of the camera. To the top of the camera. Make sure that this arm is inside that piece. We should have one small screw with no glue on it. Holds that in position there. this end we have our strap lug this strap lug is somewhat bashed I'm going to have to get a pair of pliers and square that up a bit alright I'm going to take some of that bend out of that that'll do don't go crazy trying to straighten out bent lugs there's only a small amount of brass either side if you overstress it by perhaps by trying to put it back where it came from when it doesn't want to go it may snap off and a broken strap lug is considerably worse than a slightly bent strap lug so don't get too enthusiastic I 
I have the luxury that I've probably got parts lying around and I could find another strap leg if I had to. It's probably identical with the ones from the Reflex S for example. Okay so that part's all in place and I really need to see about the film advance. I need to wind a turn of tension onto the film advance. So first I'm going to press up the release lever from below, the lock lever rather and swing it to one side. I'll hold the release lever out of the way and rotate this clockwise one full turn and drop my lock lever back into position. That's now holding one full turn of tension on there. I've got my film advance lever. I've replaced the rubber pad that was on that. That was worn out. Um, it might have even been missing on this particular camera. And I'll just use some self-adhesive foam. which says 3M on the back, but uh, it came out of the People's Republic, so it's anyone's guess what brand it really is. And I'll fit these three screws into the film advance lever. With the film advance lever in place, we can't lose the tension from our film advance mechanism. So I can put the cocking rack on the top of the camera. Okay, so taking the cocking rack. I'll apply some synthetic grease to that. I'm just going to have a closer look at this cocking rack. It might be slightly different than most of them. Let's drop that into position in there. I was just taken by a notch visible there and I'm not sure it's in all of these rack these racks. I'm going it away to check my spare parts. Yes, yeah, so I think you can see a, a distinct difference here. See that there's a step. Here's the tail of the cocking rack. See there's a step at this point. That's unusual. Most of the racks I've got, in fact all of the racks I've got, have no such step. So it looks like the rack is stronger at this point back to here with this very early cocking rack. This one's come from an early production of course. So that's interesting. I don't think it'll change anything in the way that anything works but it's just an example of a another minor difference of manufacturer is something has changed during the production run. So now I want to get the brackets in place that hold this rack down. We have this one which is held on with two screws. Now we've just really got one tooth engaged at the end there, not much more than that. This bush goes in there. Take note of that, it's not the same as the black washers that hold the front of the camera on. Uh, that go on the front of the camera. Now the screw that goes through here, through that bush, through the bracket, has got a, a shoulder on it. So it's only got a short length of thread. It's quite distinct, it's like nothing else on the camera. And we have one screw through here, holding the strap lug in place.
and we can check if the film advance mechanism is working correctly. So I'll press the release button down slightly, hold down the lock lever, and I can swing the film advance through its normal range of motion. So that's all good. Now one thing I didn't mention was the strap lug at this end. Now, there's got slotted holes in that. Now how, how I normally arrange this is I, with the screws slightly loose, I push the bracket as far this way as it will go against the heads of the screws and tighten it up there. I found that position to be the correct position in uh, virtually every case. Never had a reason to change it that I can remember. Okay, so here we have our camera. Film advance back in and working. Our rangefinder components all in place and the top trim in place. And the camera body at that stage really requires not much more than the, the meter drum and everything being fitted in place and the meter and that would be uh, ready to have the shutter put back after that. And it's mate I've got exactly up to the same stage so that's cameras one and three and now sitting there ready to have their meters put back in place.